My name is Chris Cook. I'm the Managing Director of the Office of Communication and Marketing at Texas Tech University and Texas Tech Public Media. Texas Tech University is full of great communicators and together we hope to bring you perspectives and insight that can help you in your field. Communication is what we do every day and it's intricately connected to our success and failures. This is Communicators in a Cart. Dr. Angela Lumpkin is the chair of the Department of Kinesiology and Sport Management in the College of Arts and Sciences. She's only been with Texas Tech for three years, but has made a tremendous impact on a growing program. What might make Dr. Lumpkin unique is her path through athletics that eventually led to the classroom. Come in. Dr. Lumpkin. Well, hello, Chris. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good. It's Angela, by the way. It's Angela. <laughs> well, I'm going to call you Angela from here on out then. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab coffee. I want to learn a little bit about what you're doing over here and talk about your background a little bit. You interested? It sounds great. Okay, let's, go. let's go. All right. I've never ridden in the president's golf cart. So how many faculty do you have? Well, it depends on how you add them up, Chris. <laughs> we have an interesting group of faculty. We have about, oh, half of our faculty is tenure track, and okay. then, uh, or maybe closer to a third. And then we have a lot of part-time faculty and some one-year instructors because we have, some would say, the largest major on campus. We have, in combination, we have 1,200 kinesiology really? students and 300 sport management students. And that's just at our undergraduate level. Okay. And so we need a lot of faculty to teach all those classes. You were dean at West Georgia? Uh, State University of West Georgia in Carrollton, Georgia, as well as the University of Kansas in Lawrence. Oh, okay. What college in, in Kansas? Uh, college, of education. college of Education. It was, it was education at West Georgia as well. Okay. Which is interesting because our department is now administratively in the College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> but I've, I tell people kind of humorously, I was dean of, the, of a college of education in the first college of education academically I was ever a faculty member in. So you, they were like, we're gonna, we want to bring you here. Yeah, We're I just going to name you Dean. We're I was give in, you this. in arts and sciences like colleges before, right. but I was in an education. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of unusual. <laughs> they make the Starbucks Pike place here. It's quite strong. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I pretty much doctor it up pretty well. So, yeah, we'll just go back this way, cut through here. So, I'm not going to say we have similar backgrounds. We both spent time in athletics. Right. And one thing I wanted to bring up is uh, people may not know, you were the first head coach at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, the women's basketball program. Well, that's not 100% correct. There actually okay. was a team when I got there. Okay. And it was actually the responsibility of one of the faculty members in the department, because it was all under physical education at that time. And she knew nothing about um, basketball, and so she asked her friend to coach the team, and they proceeded to, in that first year, put it on probation. So I'm, I was not the first, and I inherited the team on probation. So it was, a, it was an inauspicious beginning. 20 years after, and I know, I didn't have to look this up, because I have a personal connection to this. 20 years after you started as, as the women's basketball coach in North Carolina, they won their first national championship. Right, Sylvia Hatchell. At Sylvia Hatchell, and they beat Mama Mater on the buzzer. And it was painful, but it was exciting at the same time. And it was, and, and oddly enough, Marion Jones, who went on to mm -hmm. just a great track career, uh, hit the shot. Mm -hmm. But do, do you ever, do you, do you look back at that time and think of yourself either in women's basketball period or at least at Carolina as kind of in that pioneering phase of women's basketball and sport in the Title IX, uh, the time when Title IX was being developed and, and coming around. Absolutely. The year of time in which I coached was the very beginning. When I was at Ohio State as an assistant coach for three years while I was getting two of my advanced degrees, they had had a team a little bit earlier than North Carolina had and we competed but we used to say laughingly that we could have run our entire athletic program for women on the amount of phone charges that Woody Hayes had in recruiting. Right. Now, again, that was before smartphones and that sort of thing, but he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, which was a lot more money than we had. And so women's athletics was just beginning. We were literally on a shoestring. And 
Then when I was at North Carolina, it was minimally funded. I, I could tell you how much I was paid to coach that first year, if you'd like. It, it is quite laughable. <laughs> uh, I had a full-time faculty position at the same time. But um, all I'll go ahead and tell you, it was $1,000 to be the head coach at North Carolina that's, my that's, first year. That was annual. That was annual. annual. <laughs> that was not monthly. That was annual. And so it was, it was almost the high school model in which you, it's, a, it's a stipend that they give high school coaches in addition to their full-time teaching job. So women's athletics was just beginning, just so that you know at Ohio State, I coached for three years for nothing. So at least I got a salary increase. <laughs> but you got it started, you helped get it started. Absolutely. That was still, that was still probably the ground floor, that, that early foundation of the program. Well, that's, that's awesome. So fast forward to today, and then we'll back up a little bit, but uh, you're the chair of kinesiology and sport management here at Texas Tech, and you've been in this role for three years, mm -hmm. is that right? right. What, uh, since you got here, what, what, it seems like this program has been on a fast track development. Right. Uh, what was, when you were hired, what were your uh, goals for that program? When I first came in and talked with all the faculty, it, the, they were poised for change. It's not, it's not about me. And we, what we decided to do was really have two foci and we decided that we were gonna have a, a much, much deeper, richer science type degree program and one focused on the management side. And so what we did is we, we literally almost threw out all the tracks at the undergraduate level. We came up with a, a heavily science-based heavily science kinesiology bachelor's degree program and the old ESS was changed to kinesiology. Then we went through the approval process with the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board to get our own degree, a BS in sport management. And those programs have just taken off with the number of majors that we have today. It's just been, it's almost been magical for our faculty and for our students. When you spoke to my class, um, I could see the coach coming out. I could see how you were, how, how you could fit a coaching role so easily because you're so energetic and excitable. <laughs> so at the end of your classes, everybody put their hand in the middle and you know, throw it up and, and leave, or, or they've got to be on the edge of their seats. Well, I get I get good feedback from students, and I'm not sure that they're cheering or anything like that. I get good feedback from, from students, but I think what they are when they leave the classroom is they're glad they came, and I, that to me is success in, in teaching. Uh, if you're talking about from an athletic perspective, they're glad they are a member of this team. It's, And I think energy levels are infectious. You're a high energy person as well. And I think the, the key thing for students and for faculty is if they see you energized every day, that helps motivate them to be highly energized. Well, Angela, thank you so much for your time. I've enjoyed this. It's been a thank pleasure. You. Thank yes, you. It's a pleasure.